What's up guys, it's Zeph from TechSource and I have with me NVIDIA's latest GPU, the GTX 1080 Ti, and yes, it's pronounced Ti, not Ti apparently, and in this video we're going to be comparing it to the GTX 1080 and the Titan X Pascal. We're going to take a look at gaming benchmarks in 2K and 4K resolution, overclock performance and frames per dollar to figure out which card offers the best value for the money. The 1080 Ti ships with 3584 CUDA cores and comes clocked out of the box at 1480 MHz base and 1582 boost, which they are claiming is 47% faster than the previous generation GTX 980 Ti, or Ti I should say. They're calling it the best Ti ever with a 35% performance improvement over the preceding high-end G for his GTX lineup. It has the same TDP as their last generation 980 Ti coming in at 250 watts and only uses an 8 plus 6 pin PCI connector to power up. The card is available now for purchase and it's going to cost you $6.99 for the Founders Edition while board partner versions will get released sometime in April. So there are a few changes coming from the GTX 1080. Aside from appearance which pretty much looks identical, the Ti comes with an improved cooler. Their engineers have designed a new high airflow thermal solution that provides two times the airflow area of the GTX 1080, but in order to accomplish this they had to remove the DVI connector in the back. Instead, that area where the DVI connector once was is used to provide a larger exhaust for hot air to be expelled from the GPU. The 1080 Ti's power subsystem has also been enhanced. They have incorporated a 7 phase 2x dual fed power design. Essentially what this means is that the GPU gets supplied with even more power and less power is wasted as heat, which ultimately provides higher GPU boost clock and overclocking with less heat and noise. Speaking of heat, let's take a look at the temps. It doesn't look like there was much improvement when comparing it to their Titan X. Unfortunately, I didn't have a Founders Edition 1080 on hand, so I had to test it against the EVGA 1080 FTW instead. And it looks like the 1080 Ti is cooler during idle and warmer during full load. By the way, the testbed I'm using for benchmarking has the 6900K overclocked to 4.4 GHz, 16 gigs of RAM, and the ASUS X99 Strix gaming motherboard. Here are the benchmarks. So it looks like the 1080 Ti pretty much outperformed the Titan X in most of the games I tested in 4K resolution and we even saw some bottlenecking in Quad HD resolution. Needless to say, if you're picking up a 1080 Ti or Titan X for that matter, you shouldn't be gaming anything under 2K resolution. Let's talk overclocking. I was honestly expecting a bit more from the 1080 Ti. They actually stated that the card offers a lot of headroom for overclocking and they saw boost clocks hit speeds of 2000 MHz, but... I saw higher numbers from the Titan X and EVGA 1080. I mean the memory clock managed to hit almost 6000 on the 1080 Ti which is pretty impressive but I guess I didn't win the silicon lottery for boost clocks when it came to my 1080 Ti. However it did manage to kick some ass in benchmarks seeing performance increases as high as 9 FPS in 4K resolution. That translates to a 6% FPS increase in 4K from both the 1080 and 1080 Ti, whereas the Titan X gets a nice 9% boost in FPS. Not bad, but again, not very impressive. Looking at the total frames, we can see that the 1080 Ti barely outperformed the Titan X in games set to 2K resolution, whereas the gap is much wider when it came to 4K. The 1080 Ti is 21% faster than the 1080 in 4K resolution and 3.5 faster than the Titan X, but what card gives you the best bang for your buck? Well, with current prices, both 1080s give you the best value. 
You're only paying 98 cents per frame when it comes to 4K gaming. The Titan X is currently overpriced. I mean, the 1080 Ti not only costs almost half the price, but also outperforms it by 3.5%. Even in 2K resolution, the Titan X is overpriced for what it offers. The choices here are obvious. If you don't have any of these cards and are looking to buy one and already have a 4K monitor, then the 1080 Ti is what you're looking for. Keep in mind that it's overkill buying the 1080 Ti if you're not going to be playing in at least 2K resolution. So if you're stuck with a 1080p monitor, I would either grab a 1060 or a 1070 to be honest. 4K monitors start at $300, so you're looking around a $1000 investment if you're going to make this switch. If you already own a GTX 1080 and want the extra 20% increase in FPS and 4K gaming and don't mind paying an extra $700, then I say go for it, why not? You can always sell your 1080 to try and break even. So that is it for my video on the 1080 tie. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Are you guys going to pick one up or are you going to be waiting for Vega? This is Ed from Texaurus and I'll see you in the next one.